breaking news from KXAN News. That breaking news this morning, police investigating a homicide off of East Riverside Drive in Southeast Austin. We do have a live presence there on the scene and you can see uh, police are outside the auto parts store there. We know one person is dead as a result of this. They say what happened is that around 1.30 this morning, they were called out to this area between the auto parts uh, and also the advanced auto store there. You see officers on scene crying tape is up right now and they found a person there who had several gunshot wounds. We also know they tried to save that person's life but that person died at the scene. Homicide detectives are talking with what they call a person of interest but they gave no other details as of now but we are waiting for more details. We could also tell you this is Austin's 54th homicide of the year. And Austin's 53rd homicide happened not far from here over the weekend. Police responding to a shots fired call at the Solaris apartment complex around 2.30 on Saturday morning. There they found a victim on the ground with injuries. That person going to the hospital where they died. I last checked, police have arrested or have not, I should say, arrested anyone and say this was likely an isolated incident. First warning weather with meteorologist Kristen Curry. Well, good Monday morning. We start with a live look outside. This is a camera we've got up on top of our studios, courtesy of West Shore Home. You can see a gorgeous look at our skyline. No clouds out there. In fact, the big temperature swing this morning is the main story as we are down at the 40s this morning in the Hill Country. I mean, much, much cooler than what we've seen recently. 45 at the moment in Llano, Mason, and Streeter. 45 in Marble Falls. 52 out in Round Mountain and Johnson City, a mix of 40s and 50s here in the Austin Metro, currently downtown 53, but you'll find some 40s in the suburbs like Round Rock, Cedar Park, Dripping Springs, and Driftwood. Eastern counties, mostly 40s and 50s out here too. I mean, I wouldn't judge if you grabbed a jacket. It's a little cool too, downright chilly in some spots, but we won't stay that way. Sunshine helps bring our temperatures back up into the 70s today. Not a lick of rain expected. You could leave that umbrella at home. Coming up, we get even cooler cooler tonight. Tomorrow morning looking to be one of the coldest of the next seven. We will warm up those highs through the week and then eventually at the end of the seven day Formula One. We'll talk about the weekend preview in your first morning forecast. Thank you so much, Kristen. The debate over your tax money and how to use it to help parents pay for private school continues here in Texas with state lawmakers returning to the Capitol later on today for their special session. It was on Thursday that the Texas Senate passed a $500 million bill to create an education savings account or ESA program. This would give families $8,000 to move their children out of public school but some Republicans and all Democrats in the House are against this plan. They say it would hurt their public school districts. They also say that uh, the governor has weighed in saying that he will only support more public school funding and pay raises for teachers if the House gets on board with the ESAs. I wrote the agenda for the special session as only addressing ESAs. Once ESAs are passed, I will put on the legislative call the full funding for public education, including teacher pay raises. Now the Senate also passed a bill to increase public school funding by $5 billion and then give every teacher a minimum $3,000 raise. We have not yet seen any plans for schools, finance, or education savings accounts from the House. The governor has promised to call lawmakers back, though, in November if they cannot reach a compromise by the end of this month. Overseas now in the situation at the Rafa crossing, the sole crossing point between Egypt and the Gaza Strip remains unclear. Both Israel and Hamas denying any ceasefire to allow for foreign passport holders to evacuate and humanitarian aid to come in. There had been hopes, though, that it would open later on this morning at 9 o'clock our time, but the World Health Organization said that they need it to happen. Life-saving assistance, including health supplies to serve 300,000 patients is awaiting entry through the crossing into Gaza. And as of this morning, 4,100 people have died. And new this morning, the UN says more than 1 million people have been displaced in Gaza, and the hostage count is now at 199. 
The video that you see behind us shows people who are leaving northern Gaza trying to get to some kind of safe spot in southern Gaza. As we mentioned again, Egyptian officials saying that there would be some kind of opening at 9 a.m. and they've warned forces to people to head to the south where there would be some kind of safety for them. There are now fears of global fallout from the war continuing to grow after a six-year-old Palestinian boy and his mother were stabbed in their Illinois home last night. That little boy died. The mother may not make it. Police say they were attacked by their landlord who targeted them because of their Islamic faith and the ongoing war. President Biden issuing a statement saying that he and First Lady Jill Biden were sickened to learn of the brutal murder. In a statement, Biden urged all Americans to come together and reject Islamophobia and all forms of bigotry and hatred. Jury selection starts today in the trial of an Austin police officer charged with murder. Officer Christopher Taylor accused of shooting and killing 42-year-old Michael Ramos. This happened in a South Austin apartment complex parking lot back in 2020. APD officers say they were responding to a 911 call, reported someone dealing drugs out of their car and saying that man had a gun. Police say that Taylor fired his gun after Ramos got back in the car and trying to drive away. And may a judge granted a motion for a mistrial. That's because the court couldn't find enough eligible jurors for that case. This time it's bringing in three panels of 100 potential jurors. The judge says that she expects the trial to take about three to four weeks. Live look right now out at Zilker Park and you can see uh, the lights are still on. The stage is being broken down. It is the morning after the festivities out at Austin City Limits Music Festival. Cleanup is underway already. ACL organizers estimate about 450,000 people attended the festival this year. That means a busy day at the airport again today. Airport officials say more than 35,000 people expected to fly out of the airport. And that could be on the top list, top five of record breaking days at Austin's airport. Feeds into what's supposed to be a very busy October. So plan extra time for the crowds tomorrow as well. From ACL weekend two to Formula One this Thursday happening through next Tuesday. After a KXAN investigation into broken air conditioning units going unfixed, there's a Williamson County judge getting involved to help you stay cool. Plus the shooting at the State Fair of Texas over the weekend, leaving three people injured. What's being done to improve safety? Good morning, a live look outside downtown Austin, lit up from our KXAN tower camera. We appreciate you being here with us to kick off this Monday morning. Dallas police have identified the man they say is responsible for a shooting at the state fair. This injured three people. It caused a lot of panic. Authorities say 22-year-old Cameron Turner was the one who shot at another man at the tower building. This happened Saturday night. It was right before 8 o'clock. Lots of people were gathered in the area at that time. Three people were hit. All expected, though, to survive. Police say the suspected shooter then took off. Police were able to get him, and now he's facing three counts of aggravated assault. The fair did open up back yesterday in the afternoon. It had extra security to go along with it. Today is the 13th day the House of Representatives are without a speaker. All legislative action in limbo with another government shutdown potentially looming in less than a month. Representative Steve Scalise abruptly dropping out of the race late last week. House Republicans then picked Representative Jim Jordan of Ohio as the speaker that they want. NBC's Julie Serkin has the latest on the vote count and what's at stake as the country waits for lower chamber to get back to work. Jim Jordan, the conservative Republican who was chosen behind closed doors by his colleagues to be their speaker designee, is about 50 plus votes short to get the gavel on the floor. This all comes as the House has been virtually paralyzed for two weeks without a House speaker. They can't do so much as pass a resolution expressing support for Israel. And of course, this is all happening with two simultaneous wars overseas and a government funding deadline just around the corner. Stick with us for full team coverage coming up on the Today Show. Still ahead, open enrollment for Medicare opening up over the weekend. How long you have to make changes to your plan. 
This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning. The Rangers and Astros are four wins away from the pennant. It's been 12 years since the Rangers made the World Series. It's been a whopping one year since the Astros made their most recent appearance. A month ago, it looked possible that both of these teams would miss the playoffs. And now they're both rolling. One loss between both clubs heading into last night's Game 1 of the ALCS. First time ever the Rangers and Astros meet in the playoffs, let alone the championship series. Justin Verlander getting the start, of course. Top of the second, Jonah Heim singles to center, and that score is Evan Carter. Rangers strike first, one zip. Bottom of the fourth, base is loaded for Jordan Montgomery, who had an excellent night on the mound up to this point, and he strikes out Martin Maldonado to get out of that jam. Astros leave three on base, six Ks on the night from Montgomery and the Rangers faithful in the crowd at Minute Maid Park in Houston loving that. Top of the fifth, Leody Tavares, the ninth hitter, comes up with a big one. His first home run of the postseason gives the Rangers a 2-0 lead. Bottom of the eighth, same score. One on for Alex Bregman. That one was Jose Altuve. Bregman hits it deep to left center. Evan Carter makes the catch. And Jose Altuve has to hustle back to first base, but he forgot one thing. He forgot to touch second base on the way back. It was initially not called. The Rangers challenged it, and he was called out after the replay. Bottom of the ninth, Jose LeCurk strikes out Chaz McCormick for the final out. And the Rangers stay undefeated in the playoffs, taking game one 2 nothing. And in a battle of excellent pitching, the Rangers were just a little bit better than Houston. Uh, both sides, uh, great pitching. Uh, we just found a way to get a couple of runs across the board, and uh, that was a difference in the game, obviously. But uh, um, you know, our guy was really good, Monty. Uh, uh, terrific job he did. Yeah, that was the only mistake he made. I mean, he was he was good. He was very good, and uh, <clears throat> you know, he had thrown good sliders all night, and that was the only mistake that he he made, and he didn't miss it. 1-8-2 ERA for the Texas starters in the postseason. Second lowest of the teams remaining. The Phillies have the lowest. Game two of the series is today. First pitch is set for a little after 3.30. From Rivaldez will start on the mound for Houston. Nathan Ivaldi will get the ball for the Rangers. Tonight, it's also game one of the NLCS between the Diamondbacks and Phillies. That game is set to start a little after 7. That does it for sports. Let's go back over to you. Cool. Series is young. Forget to touch the base. <laughs> I, I still I'll do that. Right? That is something I would do. But <laughs> what a great thing for Texas to have two teams. I mean, the restaurants, the bars all over the state, I'm sure, benefiting right. from this. And yeah. we know that we're going to have a Texas team in the World yeah. Series. So right. it will continue. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast here. Hopefully you were able to squeeze in some outside time yesterday because how gorgeous was that? Yeah, it was a little breezy, but hey, we, we went through it this summer, right? So it is so nice to see those fall temperatures to feel that fall like feeling out there and I'll tell you what the clouds and radar not showing me nothing I mean it is going to be a clear sky from top to bottom we're going to see a whole lot of that sunshine getting into the later part of today temperatures this morning 40s and 50s out there 53 at Austin 40s in Lano Mason Fredericksburg 50s out in our eastern counties you can expect those 40s and 50s to stay there through about 9 a.m. then we'll see the jump to the 60s by lunchtime forecast high today, likely to come close to about 74 here in Austin. Again, not a cloud in sight. We will still have a little bit of that wind moving around today, coming out of the north. 10 to 20 miles per hour gusting to 25, but this will just be for this afternoon. Winds will relax as we get into the later part of this evening, which means clear skies, light winds, dry air. These 70s this afternoon fall pretty quickly down to the 40s tomorrow. Tomorrow, one of the coldest nights we've had in quite some time as we're seeing everybody in the 40s on Tuesday, but Tuesday will be the coldest morning. We do have warmer temperatures on the way, getting back to the 60s by the time we wake up on Friday. Seven day forecast, a little breezy today, sunshine at 70s, about four to five degrees warmer tomorrow. You see the gradual warming trend taking us all the way into the end of the week. Unfortunately, not talking anything in the way of rain this week. Got a cold front coming in dry and weak on Thursday, but we're talking 90s again Friday and Saturday. So a little bit warmer of a weekend ahead of us. Overnight lows again, warming up to the 50s and 60s later this week as well. 
Thank you, Kristen, so much. Late last night, 270 Americans, including 91 children, landed at the Tampa International Airport from Tel Aviv to escape what's happening right now, the escalating war in Israel. The evacuation organized by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, issuing an executive order last week allowing Florida to carry out rescue and evacuation operations. His administration uh, partnered with Project Dynamo, it's a nonprofit run by U.S. veterans whose sole mission is to rescue vulnerable Americans and their allies in these dangerous spots around the world. On an emotional level, it is very overwhelming to be in a situation of where you have a fear of your life. Um, but again, we're here physically safe. The hostages that are in Gaza are our concern. Uh, no one can be happy until things are settled down and they're freed. And that family you heard from right there was in Jerusalem when Hamas attacked and spent the rest of their time, this family, out of bomb shelters. Although grateful to be on U.S. soil and physically safe, they say they can't be at whole with the, not with the thought of knowing that hostages are still not safely returned to Israel. Back here at home, we know the weather may have cooled from our stifling hot summer. Some people, though, are still pretty heated about spending some of those triple digit days without air conditioning. Hard to imagine, but it's happened. A story cakes and investigators have been following since last summer. Tenants complaining their landlords just aren't moving fast enough to repair their broken ACs. Now, inspired by one of our stories, Williamson County judge says he believes renters have more power than they may think. Here we put in another request. Through an app or on the phone, Jessica Liao was careful when communicating with her apartment management. I've had to keep my cool when I've called. Even though she says management wasn't keeping her cool. And shortly after we moved in, our AC went out. Then she says came a runaround. So Monday came along, Tuesday came along, Wednesday came along. For about two weeks last month, she says she, her wife, and daughter either had no air conditioning or just a window unit in one room provided by her apartment management company. That's despite, she says, notifying management several times they did not have working AC. Anywhere from 85 to 90 degrees in our apartment. The heat took a toll, she says, on her seven-year-old daughter, Mackenzie. And one night, she started complaining that she couldn't breathe and that she was feeling sick and she wanted to throw up. Liao says Mackenzie cooled down and recovered. It was mid-September, she says, before management replaced the AC unit. I reached out to management at the Southwest Austin apartment complex, who told me they had no comment. Renters suffering without AC is an issue KXAN investigates has been following for more than a year. From Thelma Reyes in East Austin last year, who said she spent five days without air. It was hotter in here than it was outside. To Daniel Bowers in Pflugerville this summer. I'm estimating I lost 15 pounds. Who told us he suffered physically and mentally without air in his rental home for more than 50 days. It was very much an involuntary weight loss program. And that got the attention. I saw your story uh, online. Of Williamson County Justice of the Peace K.T. Musselman. Texas law does not require landlords provide air conditioning to tenants. But under state law, tenants do have a right to demand the landlord repair any condition that, quote, materially affects the physical health or safety of an ordinary tenant. After seeing your story, I thought, you know, I think that somebody could potentially make an argument based upon your reporting that their health and safety had been affected by not being provided with continuous air conditioning or cooling. So Judge Musselman sent a link to our story to the Texas Justice Court Training Center, a state agency that provides legal guidance to justices of the peace. He asked the agency if tenants could file what's called a repair and remedy lawsuit if they believe their health and safety were impacted because a landlord failed to repair AC. They did the research and found that there has been no appellate courts that have ruled on this matter. And as a result, their advice was that it is up to the individual justices of the peace to interpret that section of the code. Musselman stresses this does not mean he or any other justice of the peace would automatically rule in favor of the renter. Each case is different, but he says it does give renters an option they may not know they have. 
it means that there is potentially recourse in your local justice of the peace court, which is a judge who's elected from your neighborhood, is in the same heat that you have to live in, and is the judge who gets to determine whether or not something meets that code. The judge can order a certain issue to be repaired and remedied by a certain time date as well. Uh, as well as offer an award of a one month's rent plus $500. The law also allows the judge to grant a maximum of $20,000 in damages. Thank you, Mike. Now, Judge Musselman says in order to file a repair and remedy case against your landlord, you do have to first give them, you know, proper legal notice asking for a repair and then give them a reasonable amount of time so they can make that repair, which the law says is about seven days. You also have to be current on your rent the judge says in most cases, you don't need a lawyer to bring repair and remedy case forward. To learn more about the process, he says, just contact the justice of, your, of the peace rather in your area. The period for Medicare recipients to make changes to their plans opened up over the weekend. And this now allows millions of seniors to explore their insurance options. People enrolled can choose between the traditional plan or the privately run Medicare Advantage plans in their area. They also need to be able, will be able to join and make changes to their Medicare drug plan. Open enrollment runs until Thursday, December 7th. Changes to coverage made over the next few weeks will go into effect on January 1st. For those listening on the KXAN Today podcast, thank you so much for joining us. Join us for the 5 o'clock hour. Here's what we're tracking for you on KXAN. We have a live look at the scene right now of the latest homicide investigation in southeast Austin. What Austin police are telling us so far about it. Coming up.